The year was 2017. In November, I had the opportunity to witness the most prestigious choral competition in the whole world, the European Grand Prix for choral singing. It is like the World Cup for football or the NBA Finals for basketball. So in the choral world, it is considered the most prestigious and the toughest choral competition. I remember that night I was in, that was held in Tolosa in Spain and I was sitting right next to one of the, one of the most awarded or one of the most sought after conductor in Philippine choral scene, Mr. Jonathan Velasco. And it was really an experience and a great opportunity. So I had the opportunity to witness, one of the participants in that competition, by the way, was our very own Philippine Madrigal singers. So what, this is one of the reasons why I went there to also, not just to experience the competition, but to support our very own Philippine Madrigal singers because I have friends there as well. So it was really uh, an experience that I cannot forget. Imagine the best choirs in the whole world competing against each other. So these are the champion of champions because in order for you to qualify for that European Grand Prix or EGPS as what they call it, you need to win competitions first, prestigious competitions in Europe. So there are five major European competitions that you need to win in order for you to participate. And in that European Grand Prix, there's only one winner. There's no runner-up. So basically, all of the choirs that are in that competition are, are champions in, in their respective competitions. So I was able to, to witness. I remember the pieces that they sang so hard. You can really say that these are very hard scores, hard musical choral pieces. So that the countries are from... Latvia, France, Indonesia, Russia, and our very own Philippine Madrigal Singers. It is also kind of like you feel proud about, about our country because of the Mads, that's what they are fondly called, representing our country in that very prestigious competition. The Mads won that competition twice already in 1997 and 2007. But unfortunately, during that time, they were, their goal was to win it for the third time. It should, it, it should have been history, but unfortunately, they didn't win that competition. It was, it was the, the Vesna Children's Choir that won that competition. A children's choir based in Russia. So these, uh, this choir was the winner of the competition. I remember the sound of the choir, of this choir. They are basically a children's choir, but they sounded like an all-female choir, and it's kind of like hearing angels sing. Even though the Philippine Madrigal Singers didn't win, it, gained, it still gained the respect of the audiences in the Philippines and abroad, just because they won it twice already, and, uh, and we were able to witness the sound that they were able to produce. So in the choral world, not just in the Philippines, but around the world, the Mads or the Philippine Madrigal Singers is one of the choirs that experts, amateurs, and all choral enthusiasts look up to. And it's a very prestigious choir. But if you look, if you know the story of the members or how they're able to achieve this kind of music. And I'm sure like a lot of you here have been able to, to go to one of the a Mads concert and you know what I'm talking about. It's a, really a different experience. The, the excellence that they exhibit, the sound that they produce is really different compared to, to other choirs. They're really a serious choir. And if you look at it, it's very glamorous, prestigious. But if you talk to some of the members, if you know, members of the Mads, you will know that in order for them to reach this pinnacle of their choral journey, it took a lot of sacrifice, it took a lot of effort, and a lot of dedication. And that's what I want to stress 
today is the word dedication. So according to Cambridge Dictionary, the meaning of the word dedication is the willingness to give a lot of time and energy to something because it is important. The mass rehearsal is, they call it Sunday, Tuesday, Thursday, and Sayo. But most of the members, they don't live in the campus of the University of the Philippines. Some, most of them live, because it's not exclusive to UP anymore, so a lot of the members live outside of UP. So they commute, they go, they go to, to UP by commuting Sunday, Tuesday, and Thursday. So it takes a lot of effort compared to us here where if you, go, if you want to go to rehearsal, you can just walk because it, it's in the campus. That's one of the obstacles there. And joining the MADS, you don't have a salary. They do this for free. And in order for you to, to join the MADS, you need to quit your job because of the responsibility that it entails. They go on tours, they have lots of appointments, so which means you don't have an income. But a lot of people are still, still want, wanting to join the MADS. And upon joining, you can really see their dedication. And because of that dedication, they were able to achieve the success, winning the European Grand Prix for choral singing twice, first in 1997 and in 2007. And, and they're now considered as one of the best choirs in the world. There was one even one critic who said that the sound of the mats is like hearing angels sing. Professor Andre Veneracion, the founder of the Philippine Madrigal Singers, once said that I don't care if you're a good singer or the best singer I have, you have to attend rehearsals. That's the only thing that will allow us to make good music. As long as the discipline is there, nothing can go wrong. Our conductor, Robert Delgado, is an alumnus of the Philippine Madrigal Singers, and during our rehearsals, he always tells us that he always tells us this line, and he told us that this line is what Mom OA, is what most of them call her, Mom OA tells them in the mats, no one is indispensable. So even if you're the best in the choir, even if you're the best soprano, if you're even if you're the obligato, if you don't attend rehearsals, she can easily kick you out. She don't care if you're the best. No one is indispensable. And that you can really see the dedication of the founder of the Philippine Madrigal Singers. Why do we need to dedicate our time, our effort, our energy, our resources to this cause? We join this choir, the Sons and Daughters, and upon joining, we know that we have this responsibility that we need to be dedicated, dedicated to our cause dedicated for ministry. And why is that so? Excellence is our goal. And excellence requires dedication, especially in, in choral singing. We all know how complicated choral singing is. It's not like solo singing. In order for a choir to produce a beautiful, excellent sound, it takes a lot of effort. Blending together, hitting the right notes, Make sure you get the correct interpretation of the text of the spirit of music. And if one member is absent and you are already learning all the subtleties, all the details, and then one member is absent, and you already have the, this good sound, and then the next day this member comes in, the sound will be different as to what you've practiced before. That's how sensitive choral music is especially compared to solo singing. So, in order for us to have an excellent choral sound, we need dedication. And dedication is so strong because, especially in this cause, we are dedicated to our ministry. We are dedicated to God. And why do we need to be dedicated? Because dedication is the requirement for excellence. Because the God that we are serving is a God of excellence. In the Old Testament, 
offering is part of worship. And when God requires offering, He requires not just normal sheep, normal goat. He wants the unblemished one. That's an evidence that our God, that the God that we are serving is a God of excellence. This is the grand conductor of, of the Mastiffs after the competition. And the woman over there is the daughter of the founder. So, next slide, please. In Exodus 12, verse 5, the Lord requires unblemished lamb. So during the time, during the time of the Israelites, most Israelite family, they want the perfect lamb to, for them in order for them to keep. But since the Lord requires unblemished lamb, then this is a test of how they wanted to serve the Lord. And in Malachi 1 verse 6 to 14, if you have your Bibles with you, you can, you can read it later. There's this verses in the Bible where the Lord wasn't happy with the offering that the people offered. During this time, the people offered food that were spoiled. They offered lamb that are lame, lamb that are blind. So these are the blemished one. And what was the Lord's reaction? The Lord wasn't happy. Because as a God of excellence, he requires excellent offering to him. In verse 8, verse 8, when you offer blind animals in sacrifice, is that not evil? And when you offer those that are lame and sick, is that not evil? Present that to your governor. Will he accept you or show you favor? Says the Lord of hosts. So here we can see that the offering that were offered to the Lord were an excellent offering and the Lord wasn't happy. So here, what is our offering to the Lord? As members of the sons and daughters, as members of the choir serving the Lord, we offer our voices to the Lord. We offer our time. We offer our singing. We are in the singing ministry and our offering should be excellent. I was a member of the choir as well in Mountain View College and even in, in AUP back then. And it's funny because sometimes we will have these performances. And sometimes the performance is good. It happens. Sometimes it's, it's not that good. And when it's good, everyone is happy. You, 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 you will know it. You can feel it if the performance or the concert is good. At the backstage, you will talk about it. You will know that the performance is good. And sometimes it's not so good, maybe there's some out of tune or something, or you were able to produce good choral sound. And a lot, a lot, a lot of times I hear this line, I okay ra na para, para bitaw na sa ginoo, if the performance is not good. So, I don't know if it happens to, to the sons and daughters of my former choirs before. The performance is good, everyone's happy, the performance is not good. Someone will say, I okay ra na para bitaw na sa ginoo. So it's okay not to perform well. So, but here we can see that the God that we are serving is a God of excellence, and He requires excellent offering, and that includes excellent performance, excellent choral sound, and that that's where dedication comes in. We need to dedicate fully our time, our energy, our resources to God as our offering to Him, because God is a God of excellence. Is excellence attainable? Maybe you will say, this is what I can produce. What can I do? I'm, I'm not a music major. When the Israelites were, there was one time when the Israelites were in the wilderness, the Lord required them to build a tabernacle. And during the time, the best wood, the best wood that you can use in building infrastructures is cedar wood. If you look at the history, the Egyptians use it in building their architectures. Solomon used it in building temples during the, the height of the prosperity of the Israel. 
But there was a period when they were still journeying in the wilderness that God required them to use not cedar wood, but acacia or acacia as, as how we call it here. Acacia is not the best wood. It's not the best wood available. But in their case, that was what's available in the land. And they, don't, they didn't have the opportunity or the resources to import cedar wood. So the Lord knows that even though cedar wood is the best wood that, that you can use to build a tabernacle, but because it's not attainable during that particular period of time, the Lord instructed them to use acacia or acacia instead, which is not an excellent wood. So what is the implication to that? The implication is the Lord requires our best, our best that we can give. He doesn't require you to, be, to sound like the best voice major at UP. He doesn't require you to sound like the soloist of the Philippine magical singers. But what, what is your best? That is what the Lord requires. So whenever you feel that your that excellence is not attainable, think about this instance or this this event in the lives of the Israelites where the Lord required them to use what is available, even though that wood is not the best, the Akasha tree or the Akasha wood. Whatever you do, work at it with all your heart as working for the Lord not for human masters, Colossians 3, verse 23. The more that we need to strive for excellence, because we serve, we sing, not just for the glory of our country, not just for the glory of our university or our college, but it's for the Lord. So if other choirs do their best, even without salary, commuting every other day, battling the traf traffic of Metro Manila just for them to be able to produce a good, excellent sound to represent the country. How much more for us? We just not represent the country, but we represent our God. And why do we need to strive for excellence? Excellence. E excellence in singing, excellence in performance, excellence in our ministry honors God and it inspires people. I'm sure you've you've heard very good choirs. One of the one of the one of the good choirs that I've encountered is the one in, in AUP, Philippine Meister Singers, or formerly AUP Ambassadors. And when you listen to them sing gospel songs or or sacred songs, it really inspires you. It draws you closer to God as if you compare it to other choirs who didn't exert that much effort to produce that, mu that music. So that's one of the reasons why we need to strive for excellence because in serving the Lord in our ministry, if you produce beautiful choral music, you will inspire more people closer to God. It is based on my experience listening to very good choirs. So sons and daughters, this is a challenge for you. I know joining, joining this choir has no salary and it takes a lot of our time, but since we joined this choir and we have a purpose, and we have a responsibility, and that is to serve God with the best that we can because the God that we are serving is a God of excellence. Thank you.